Hey, it's Nikachu, and today we are going to take a look at the worst blunder in Magic the Gathering Pro Tour history. Our hero today is Yam Wing Chun, a fresh face to the Pro Tour, and this is his breakout event because he's made the semifinals and he's up against the end boss, Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa. Between Nationals, Grand Prix, Pro Tours, and World Championships, Paulo has won them all. Paulo is a pro player in his prime, but Yam's here to prove that he can play just as well as the best. He's tied a five game match, two and two, and they're going into the fifth and final game, with the winner moving on to the finals. And it is a mirror match. Both players are playing the breakout deck Ramanap Red. The deck features aggressive creatures with haste, which means that they can attack the turn that they are played, and burn spells which can be used to directly damage the opponent. But this deck is so aggressive that even the lands that cast your spells can do damage. Ramanap Ruins, the namesake card of the deck, it's a desert, which has an activated ability of paying 4 mana, tapping itself, and and sacrificing a desert to deal two damage to each opponent. Combined with Sun Scorch Desert, which also deals damage when it enters the battlefield, these games are over before they even get started. But the key Mushroom Cloud Bomb of the deck is Hazaret the Fervent. This legendary god attacks for five and has haste and indestructible, which means no amount of damage will kill her. But there's a catch. Hazaret can't attack unless you have one or fewer cards in your hand. But that's okay, you can keep the cards in your hand low with Hazaret's ability. For one red and two generic, you can discard a card to deal two damage to your opponent. You better believe that nobody wants to sit across from this card. The matchup really is about throwing haymakers at each other and seeing who comes out on top. So can Yam beat the champion? Let's go take a look at the action. All right, we're underway in game number five. Who's it going to be? Paulo Vitor Damodarosa. <laughs> is, is this a one drop? Yam Wing Chung finding himself in the finals. It is a one drop, though. It's going to immediately die. Players are playing very quickly now. That was the fastest shock I've ever seen. Yeah, they've played a lot of this matchup, and they kind of know the interactions inside and out. Paulo, with that two drop, gets to attack. Earthshaker Kenra hits the red zone. And most importantly, Paulo did immediately find that third land, so he will be able to play PNLR in turn three. This is a very good start for Paulo Vitor. Yeah. Let's see what Yang Wing Chun can come up with here, though. Yeah, does he want to play defense here? It looks like he just has the Earthshaker Kenra, so we might be off to the races, but Yang Wing Chun drew one of the more important cards in the matchup here. Hazaret the Fervent sitting wow. in his hand. So we're going to see him craft his game plan around that Hazaret. And yes, we are off to the races, Paul, as the Earthshaker Kenra is going to hit the red zone. And that means no blocking for either player. So bang, bang, bang. Right back and forth. Take one from this So land. much damage. Play a Pia Nalar. Pia Nalar My looking friend. fantastic here. Wow. It just makes these one toughness creatures look so bad. Right. Yeah, look at this. The Bowman Courier, the Earthshaker Kenra, all of these creatures just can't do anything. Uh, <laughs> he's got he's got the uh, he's got the crasher here, so that can't get in for some damage. He can he can opt to play it, exert, make it so that the Thopter can't block. So at least if Paulo opts to block with the PNLR, it will be with the two power creature, so that doesn't feel quite as bad. He can when, he can force a trade there. He can force a trade and you know you're, you're getting rid of a two two body. Now if he wants to go full pedal to the metal though. He can make it so Pia can't block and just jam, right? Just all of the pedals, yes. He can also do that, and that will make it so that the on crack pressure wouldn't die. Right. So let's see what Yan wants to do here. He has played on crop crasher. He could also, also could leave it back. Yeah, he could also just attack with the on crop crasher mm -hmm. and not the Earthshaker Kenra. Yeah. Seems like a reasonable line. Let's see how Yan wants to go. Shields are down right now for Paulo Vitor Damodorosa. He is completely tapped out, so Yam has perfect information about this combat step, at least, and how he wants to approach it. Yeah, and Yam Wing Chun... doing math already. <laughs> well, Yam Wing Chun's got that Hazard the Fervent in hand, but it won't be able to attack, at least on turn four. He's got too many cards. So the question is, 
How much pressure can Paulo bring to the table? Oh, wow, and he opts to play it a little more defensively here. Doesn't attack with either creature. This matchup is usually a slugfest of fighting fire with fire. So why doesn't Yam attack here? And it's because he's analyzed the situation. He's the one behind with 14 life. Paulo got to go first and has developed a much larger board. And Yam has calculated that if he attacks, Paulo will attack back for way more, and he's not going to win the race. So there's only one option left. Leave skid marks all over the battlefield because he's slamming the brakes. Now he's going to use his creatures to block Paulo's attackers, stabilize the damage, and go in for a counterattack. Yeah, what is Paul, Paulo working with here? Paulo knows what he needs to do. He uses a braid to take down the on-crop crasher and then sends everybody into the red zone. And certainly going to be a block here from Yam. And given that Yam Wing Chun opted to keep both creatures back, you kind of know what his game plan is. He wants to play a little defensively here. Yeah, he's really trying to set this game plan up where when the dust settles, he's got Hazaret and a reasonable life total, and Paulo doesn't have much going on. And he really wants to find some kind of removal effect here if he can but it'll take about 17 minutes to find out what he draws. Sure. He okay. found an incendiary flow, Paul. <laughs> he did find it. Yeah, that was definitely a solid draw. He can use that to, to exile the Earthshaker Kenra, follow that up with also a one drop. And he will be able to attack with the Hazard next turn, I think. It's, yeah, as he has a mountain in hand. Here comes the Courier. Yeah. Is this Bomat Courier going to stay on defense? Special delivery. Kendra gets exiled to Incendiary Flow. Yeah, I think I kind of like keeping this back. Yeah, it can actually trade for the Falconrath Gorger. And again, Yam highly incentivized to keep his life total as high as possible because we've seen how quickly Hazret the Fervent can clean up the ground game. Here's a Braid, Destroy Target Artifact, and Paul is doing everything he can to keep as much pressure on. But here we go. Yam is going to draw Off his to the card, races, and this is going to be a quick finish here in game number five. So Yam Wing Chun's in trouble. He's at eight life, and none of his stuff could stick on the board. Paulo, on the other hand, has creatures in play and enough deserts to be sacrificed by the Ramanap runes to deal six damage. All he needs to do is to get it online. Yam Wing Chun is so far behind this game, it's like being at the back of a line waiting for a toilet on an airplane. And the odds of using it before the plane lands aren't good, but he's got to try. Yam drew Collective Defiance. Ooh, that is an interesting draw. For the turn. Now, he can only play one of these this turn, but he could use it to wipe away Paulo Vitor's board here and even do three damage to him if he really wanted to. Right, but... I mean, the typical play would be to play <laughs> Hazard and start smashing, but... Yeah. The, the question is, does he actually want to play a Hazret here on defense, at least for a turn to preserve his life total? Uh. He can opt to play the Hazret, stay back. The Thopter will only get him down to seven. And the important thing here is to just make sure you're not taking chunks of two damage, because of course that means for every, for every you know, uh, uh, chunk of two damage you take, that's one less mountain that Paulo needs to draw for his ramming up ruins. He could go for the Collective Defiance here. Okay, but he's opting for the Hazaret. Hazaret. Now he's thinking, do I want to leave it back? The problem here is if he opts to attack, Paulo can attack back for three, get him down to five. I think it might just be a little too close, but he's running the numbers and going through. Wow, Paulo at 16. Yes. But also, Paulo's going to have to tap that Ramanap Ruins. At some point, potentially, this but Paulo can draw a burn oh, spell, a haste creature. Yes, just so many different things oh, here. Oh my goodness! Oh, is it? Is it? Is it getting in there? He's shaking his head. He can't <laughs> decide. It's such a close decision. He's looking. Just at kidding. Hazard. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. He's looking at Hazard saying, "What would you do?" It's like, hey, Paulo, you got twelve top eights. What would you do? Help me out here. Wait, but me, maybe. Just toss it up in the air. And he is going to win. Oh, attack. and he Hazard gets the in. Fervent hits the red zone. Off to the races. And let's see who is going to win this race. Is it going to be Paulo Vitor Domodorosa or Yam? 
So Yam calculates his best chance of winning this game is to attack. Sends that Hazaret into the red zone for 5 damage. So Yam's committed to this plan. There's no going back. Just as you're committed waiting for the bathroom as people line up behind you. If you leave the line now, you're screwed. That was a Bomac Courier off the top. Right, and that was a big draw. That... <laughs> That will get Yan Wing Chun down to four life if Paulo chooses. Now, Paulo has to think what's the combination of cards that Yan Wing Chun can have to get his life total down to 11. Now, Paulo currently holding a Chandra's defeat, so he's feeling pretty safe to any other haste creature that could be on the battlefield here. But this is this is a straight up race. I, th I think Paulo just wants to get Yan Wing Chun down to four here. So, Paulo attacks his opponent to a precarious for life, but completely leaves himself open to being attacked by the Hazaret. And the thing is this, Yam Wing Chun has collective defiance in his hand. So between the 5 damage from Hazaret and the 3 damage from the burn spell, Paulo's effectively at 3 life. Yam's only one top deck away from taking this match down. So what is his out? Incendiary Flow. It can deal the last three points of damage to take down this Pro Tour Hall of Famer. But he's got to find it quickly because he could be dead next turn. All right. That's exactly what he's going to do. Wow. So Yam Wing Chun, with the Collective Defiance, he doesn't even need to use it to, to kill a creature. He can just... He, that's, a, that's a three damage burn spell for three mana. Hazard is five, so that Paulo is effectively at three. If he finds an Incendiary Flow, that will be the game. He could just kill him right here. Right. Incendiary flow? Is it a flow? Let's see what he's got. It's a flow! It is it's an a flow. incendiary flow! Oh he my god! It. Yam Wing Chung just It's an incendiary it. flow off the, the top! Here. And look at this! No, no, he's you can't attack! Looking. You can't attack! He has only two cards in hand! He can't is he in his combat step? What's going on? He can't attack. Is it? In, oh, oh, that cost no. him the game. Oh, that cost no. him the game. That could cost Yam Wing Chun the game. He's oh not my God. allowed to collect to attack with Hazaret. And if he's already moved into his combat step, it'll be too late for him to deploy one of the two sorceries in his hand and a huge head shake for him. What? The judge is going to help explain exactly where we're at, but there's no way that that isn't him going to combat. Right, he picked up that Hazaret. It, 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 he is in his attack step right now. So Yam Wing Chun top decks the Incendiary Flow. He's so excited, he's got the game in the bag, goes to move to attack with the Hazaret. But there's only one problem. Hazaret can't attack unless you have one or less cards in hand. He's got two burn spells sitting there. And this is the Pro Tour. Once you move to a stage of a turn, you can't go back. And by trying to attack with the Hazaret, he was clearly in his attack step. If only he emptied his hand by playing his burn spells before he attacked, he could easily win the match. But the game's not over. He still has a Hazaret in play, and he can use his burn spells to kill Paulo's creatures. But being so close yet so far, it's like being next in line to use the toilet. But then all of a sudden, the pilot turns the seatbelt sign on and makes an announcement that they're beginning their descent, and you have to sit back down. Okay, he needs to get a little slap of the cheeks here. He, he needs to get it back together. Now, he cannot attack. Is there a way that he can still find a victory here? He won't be able to win this turn. Right. No, no he, he is not He is not just dead yet. So I, I don't believe. Because he can use the uh, the Collective Defiance here to get the Falcon Wrath Gorger off the board, put Paulo down to eight, block the Bowman Courier, take one from the Thopter, if Paulo draws a mountain, that would only get Yan Wing Chun down to one with the Raminap Ruins. Wow. This is incredible stuff here. This is one of the hardest possible things to do. In wow. Game, is to make a mistake and be able to get yourself back together and reassess the board and say, what can I do now? Yeah, th th he, is, he is not in his first, first main phase. He picked it up looking to attack. Paulo has to think. How can I lose this game? Well, it's with this Hazaret. At this point, because he's already gotten Yam down to four life, he doesn't necessarily need to go all in with by attacking with all of his creatures. He can now opt to play a little more defensively, try to get in with two attacks with the Thopter. If he draws a mountain, that's four damage. 
I wonder what Paulo's thinking. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the information we do. Right. He saw Yam go, I want to go to a tax and then take it back, and then clearly was distraught about the decision. So Paulo has to think, I got away with something here, and he's got to try to sort out what it is. I think he's, he, I think he's going to go for the Thopter here, because that's guaranteed damage. He can use the Hazret to block both of the ground creatures. Oh my gosh. Wow. So what does Paulo need here? A mountain? Mountain will not get it done. If he plays Mountain, again, Yam Wing Chun can block the Falcon Wrath Gorger, take run from the Bowmat Courier, go to three, use the Raminat Bruins, and he would go down to one life. Okay, so here Glory we Bringer go. would do it. Back to you, Paulo Vitor Domitorosa. You've been given a second chance at life. Okay, there's the he mountain. Found a mountain. There is the mountain. Paulo picks up his graveyard to have a quick look. He does have one card under the Bowmat Courier that could right. become two. Yeah, and, and I don't think Paulo can attack here. I think Paulo's best bet is to just pass. To play Mountain. Play Mountain, Go. pass, use the Raminap Ruins, sacrifice the Sunscorched Desert, get Yam Wing Chun down to two, and hope to draw another burn effect. Because one damage isn't really going to matter here. Now, Yam doesn't win here either, though, right? Even with Collective Defiance to clear away the two blockers, he's still attacking for five. Right. Plus his draw step, but he won't have enough and, and, uh, mana to actually right. use Hazaret in addition to casting a spell here. So Paulo has played his mountain and passed the turn back. Yeah, and I don't think yet. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out what he can draw here. Oh. Does does Yam Wing Chun have an Earthshaker Kenra in his graveyard? He does have an Earthshaker Kenra in his yard. He's one mana short from being able to do that, and he did not draw a land. He drew a Soul Scar Mage, Paul. Wow, Soul Scar Mage. So he can play. He can either use that as a damage effect by throwing it with Hazaret. Right, right. So now he has. Wait, okay, don't do that yet. <laughs> let's not do it. Let's not make the same mistake twice. Don't even touch that Hazaret, Yam. He's going to have to deploy at least one of these cards from his hand if he's going to be able to attack. So what he can do here is probably just play a Soul Scar Mage and attack with Hazaret. Forcing a chump block. Forcing a chump block. And Paulo's going to chump block Close here. enough to forcing a chump Right, right, right. And Paulo's likely just going to block here with the Falcon Wrath Gorger. End of turn, activate the Raminap Ruins, sacrifice the Sun Scorched Desert, get Yam Wing Chun down to two. And then he has a lot of outs. Again, Mountain isn't out. Shock isn't out. Chandra Torch of Defiance isn't out. Raminap Ruins. He could also um, attack with Bomat Courier, put another card under the Bomat Courier, and get, that would give him two more opportunities at finding a shock. Oh, interesting. He's actually going to just chump block with the Bomat Courier here. Paulo's last card in hand now. Yes. He can actually use that to kill the Soul Scar Mage. He's got a Chandra's Defeat. He'll have to do that next turn, right? Yeah, right. it's Chandra's Defeat, exactly. But this turn, he needs to use up all of his mana on a Ramanap Ruins activation, correct? Right, so he can use Ramanap Ruins, get Yam Wing Chun down to two, untap, cast Chandra's Defeat on the Soul Scar Mage, and get in for the final two points of damage with the Falcon Wrath Gorger. So now Yam Wing Chun has to decide, do I want to use this Incendiary Flow on Falcon Wrath Gorger or Paulo Vitor's face? He's going to have to use it on the Gorger, isn't he? He's going to have to. All right, here we go. He says, I'm casting it. <laughs> and now he's going to go into the tank about where he's casting it. Yeah, and now keep in mind, Paulo, for, for Paulo, Earthshaker Kenra also an out, as it can attack through the Soul Scar Mage. So Paulo has a ton of outs. Mountain is an out. Earthshaker Kenra is an out. Shock is an out. Okay, he's going to take down the, the Falcon Wrath Gorger. All right, here we he's go. He's going to the turn. Paulo just has right, to activate tucking, his ramen up. Here we go. Yeah, we okay. down to two. Down to two. So many outs. Can Is it a mountain? Paulo find it. It's it's a Chandra. It's Chandra. He can activate it, and that's two damage to Yang <laughs> Wing Chun. Paulo Vitor Domino Rosa oh, wins no. the match. Three games to two in a oh, match no. that will certainly go down as one of the most dramatic finishes we've had in the semifinals. Yam Wing Chun with a critical mistake here in game five. And Paulo Vito Domino Rosa says, I'll take it. So Paulo Vito Domino Rosa activates the Ramanap Ruins to put his opponent down to two life. Almost anything he can top deck will win the game, including just a random land. But he top decks Chandra, Torch of Defiance, and deals the last two points of damage 
with the plus one ability. Exile the top card of your library. You may cast that card. If you don't, Chandra Torch of Deviance deals two damage to each opponent. So the Hall of Famer caught a lucky break. Yeah, made him sweat really hard. I mean, he was literally shaking during the match. Well, that's my video for today. Who do you think is the rightful winner of this match? Let me know why in the comment section below. Smash like for high stakes magic and don't forget to subscribe to my channel or you're gonna punt your next match playing for prizes.